Hi, my name is Ben Jones, and I'm a subject matter expert here at Wiley Efficient Learning. And we're here today in order to help you with some of the concepts related to the CFA exam so you can be successful through level one, two, and three. Today, I just want to talk to you a little bit about diversification because it's your friend. It reduces risk. And on a daily basis, I work with clients who get upset when the market falls too much or too little. And you might want to ask yourself, how do you actually deal with that? Or how do you do any kind of calculations in order to put together the appropriate level of variability or risk associated with a portfolio to match what you do with a client? Well, you ask your client, hey, if you started with $100,000 worth of investments and they drop to $70,000 next year, would that allow you to be able to sleep, eat? Would you feel stressful, right? Would you kick your dog, stuff like that? Well, if that starts to get into a really unusual situation, then you probably want to ask yourself, you need to adjust your overall volatility in the portfolio in order to make sure that it matches the risk that they can accept. And that's what we're talking about with standard deviation. Now, we have a question here that has standard deviation in a two asset portfolio. You've got to know this. You can't be thinking twice about what the actual calculation is, and you've got to know how to put it all together. So let's take a look at what this question looks like. We've got Alicia. She has a choice of two different assets. One's at 30%, so you should be thinking that the other asset will be 70%. We've got a standard deviation of 12 We've got a variance uh, on asset B, which hopefully you know is the square of the standard deviation for that asset because it's the amount that actually varies around the mean squared. We're going to compute her portfolio standard deviation. And they also give us the correlation. How do these two assets actually interact with one another? And they tell us that that's 0.7. Now, one thing I actually wanted to ask you before you get started on this question is, you've got a standard deviation of asset A, which is 0.12. You've got a standard deviation of asset number B, and that is, remember we said that squared term? Well, we're gonna have to take the square root of that, and that actually turns out to be 0.1414. So we've got two standard deviations, and we're gonna put these guys together, and we're also gonna say that the correlation is going to be equal to 0.7. That's a pretty high number. So if you have 0.12 standard deviation of 1, 0.14, 14%, and a correlation of 0.7, once we start to look at, in the bottom right hand of the screen, 8% for the portfolio, 12.68 or 7, I'm hoping that if you're stressed on exam day, freaking out a little bit, can't remember the equation, and you're saying, which one could it possibly be? Think about this. You go from 12% to 14% and you have a 70% correlation. I'm thinking if you put these two together, you're probably a little closer to that 12%. Now remember as well, whenever we're looking at the 12%, we have 30% of the portfolio in this one. So we're actually weighting it just a little bit closer to the 12. We got 70% of the portfolio over here, right? So if I was to take a guess without even doing any of the calculations, I would probably say, ooh, that 12.68 actually looks pretty darn good. Because how can I take these relatively volatile stocks, relatively highly correlated, and get it down to 7 or 8%? That's kind of a stretch. So why don't we do this? In a two-asset portfolio, what are we really looking at? Standard deviation is going to be the weight squared, right? standard deviation of the first squared. Then we do the same thing for the second asset that we're looking at. Then we need to add two times standard deviation one, standard deviation two, weight one, weight two, and then we have that correlation for one and two. <clears throat> now at the end of the day, all we're going to do is we're going to fill in all of this information. So for the first one, we knew that we're going to put in 30% of the portfolio, right, squared. The standard deviation was 0.12 squared. And did anybody catch the fact that you actually have to take the square root of all that? That's what makes this very, very tricky. It's a good thing that I actually missed it because on exam day, sometimes you need to breathe and you need to take it all in because you're gonna miss that. And if I was an examiner, I'd make sure that I had an answer that was both squared and you actually took the square root to make sure I could try to con you know, confuse you along the way. 
If we do the next term, we're going to do 0.7 because we already know that 70% was going to be in portfolio 2. We did, remember, the variance is the squared term of standard deviation, so we're not going to put any square on there. It's 2 times, and we're going to do 0 0.12, 0 0.14. That's the square root of our variance, right? Then our weights, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, correlation 0.7, we're going to take our square root. So hopefully you're really quick with your calculators, you know exactly, you know exactly what this number turns out to be, and we get down to 12.68%. Did you see how this seems to be a fairly good guess? You couldn't bring down the overall volatility of that portfolio with just two assets to anywhere near that 7.06 or the 8.05. So on this one, our answer is B. So come on over and join us a little bit longer in efficientlearning.com slash CFA, and we'll take this just a little bit further.